Welcome to the Dole Institute of Politics special tribute to veterans virtually. This is our 13th year. We regret we cannot have our annual tribute to veterans gala at the Dole Institute with the Moonlight Serenade Orchestra. COVID-19 is unprecedented and we are observing social distance and all safety precautions. This semester, all of our programs at the Dole Institute have been virtual. Veterans Day was created to honor those who have served the country in war and peace, alive or deceased, who have sacrificed their lives so we can have freedom. In 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower issued the first Veterans Day proclamation, which stated, in order to ensure proper and widespread observance of this anniversary, all veterans and veterans organizations and the entire nation will wish to join hands in the common purpose. Today, even though we face the harsh reality of COVID-19, we still wish to join hands and observe this special occasion. Although we can't host you here at the Dole Institute of Politics, we decided to bring our veterans program to you in the comfort of your home. So sit back, relax, and enjoy our special tribute to you this evening. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and white stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air deep proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. It is always an honor to introduce my boss, and my friend, director of the Dole Institute of Politics, William Lacey. He will join us tonight to provide you. Bill? Thank you, Barbara. Uh, it's great to be with everyone tonight, virtually. I wish we could all be together at the Dole Institute and joining, as Barbara said, the Moonlight Serenade Orchestra and the fabulous dancing of all our veterans and their friends and their families. I want to thank Dr. Barbara Ballard. She's been organizing the gala now for 13 years. She does a fantastic job with it. Uh, and as those of you who have attended knows, it is quite a party. And Dr. Ballard throws up a party. And we're always so proud of it. We always get such a great turnout and everything. You know, I just want to begin tonight by thanking all the veterans for their service and thanking all the military family members who may be watching tonight for the sacrifices that they've made and the support that they've given the members of their family who are part of the military. My grandfather was on a boat headed to World War I in Europe just before the, the uh, war concluded. 
my uncle uh, was a combat medic who went into Omaha Beach three days after the Normandy invasion. My dad served in the army and served in Germany and in Korea. And so, and I know Barbara's father was a long serving, I believe, master sergeant, the highest level of sergeant that you can get. And we are so proud of our connection with the military and military veterans. And of course, a lot of that comes from Senator Bob Dole, a veteran who, you know, left the University of Kansas back in the early 40s and joined the Army and was ironically assigned to the 10th Mountain Division. That's kind of ironic for a kid from Western Kansas, which is flat as a pan. Senator Dole has all been very proud of his uh, military experiences. And of course, he came out of the war permanently disabled, and yet it never stopped him. And he's worked so hard to get the World War II Memorial built. He worked so hard to get the Eisenhower Memorial funded. Uh, and of course, until this pandemic, he was still going quite often to the World War II Memorial to welcome honor flights from all over the country. But it's also great to be associated with Senator Elizabeth Dole, Senator Bob Dole's wife. Uh, all, all of her papers and collections are here at the Dole Institute, as well as Senator Bob Dole's. And Senator Elizabeth Dole was the first woman who, as a member of President Reagan's cabinet, the head of the Department of Transportation, headed a military unit, and that was the Coast Guard. So they're quite a pair. I've known the Doles for over 30 years. Uh, they're a wonderful couple. Uh, I still stay very much uh, in touch with them. And I have a real treat tonight because I get to introduce a video from Senator Bob Dole that he recorded this week. So I want to thank the veterans for all that you've done for our country. I want to encourage everybody who's tuning in to enjoy this great show that Barbara has put together for you. And I want to introduce my good friend and an American hero, Senator Bob Dole. Senator, great to have you with us tonight. Thanks for joining us in this virtual celebration of Veterans Day. As a veteran, I'm very pleased to honor all veterans, and I want to especially recognize my friend and yours, Barbara Ballard. And next year, Barbara, we hope that you'll have a maybe a real Veterans Day rather than a virtual birthday. But you've done a great job over the years and I'm certain our Kansas veterans appreciate it, regardless of our party affiliation. Veterans are veterans. They have common causes and in some cases common complaints, complaints, and some are valid. So we need to keep addressing veterans problems. That's the future. And to make certain that anybody leaving the service, whatever branch, when they become a veteran, they're entitled to certain benefits and they'll be taken care of as I'm certain they will. In fact, now if a veteran needs attention and doesn't seem to get it in the veteran's hospital, he can go to a private doctor, get whatever it takes to get him well again or whatever, treat him, and the government will pay for it. So hopefully next year will be a great year for us. And Barbara, again, I want to thank you for all you do. And hopefully we'll see you soon. And if not, we'll see the veterans in full next Veterans Day. God bless America and God bless our veterans. Oh. Thank you, Bill, very much. When we were discussing this program, Bill Lace and I talked about maybe trying to get Senator Dole, and I'm so pleased that uh, he was able to do that. So thank you very much, Senator Dole, for taking the time, as you always have, to take care of Kansans and especially our veterans. Thank you very much. When we decided to sponsor our tribute to Veterans Gala, as we said 13 years ago, 
I contacted the University of Kansas uh, ROTC and invited them to become um, co-sponsors with us. ROTC agreed unanimously. They were excited and they have been supportive, enthusiastic and dedicated partners. And we are so grateful to them for joining forces with us. I want to thank ROTC for all of their support. And it has been a pleasure over the years to work with you. You will now hear from our Army, Air Force, and Naval ROTC. After their remarks, you will have the all ROTC salute and taps will follow. Good evening. My name is Lieutenant Colonel Finch, and I took over as the Professor of Military Science here at the Army Reserve Officer Training Corps program this last summer. I want to thank Dr. Ballard and the Dole Institute for inviting us to speak on behalf of the Army ROTC program. As everyone tuning in probably knows, our mandate at the KU Army ROTC program is to commission leaders of character dedicated to providing the United States Army with the leadership necessary to fight and win in a complex world. Every cadet who completes ROTC will commission as a second lieutenant in active duty, U.S. Army National Guard, or in the U.S. Army Reserves. Tonight's cadet, Cadet Harrison Manlove, will commission into the active duty after he graduates next May. Cadet Manlove is a Kansas native and a history major who is currently the Jayhawks Battalion Adjutant. Cadet Manlove is the type of lieutenant that every battalion commander really, really wants. He's calm, he's fit, he's full of energy, and he's capable of making sound judgment calls under pressure. I'm 100% confident that when Cadet Manlove takes the oath to our Constitution and commissions as a second lieutenant, he will join the long line of veterans who have served with distinction. So without further ado, Cadet Harrison Manlove. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to thank the Dole Institute and ROTC for this opportunity and for putting on this event. And I'd like to extend my deepest thanks to you, our veterans, and your families, and those who came before who are no longer with us. Your service and sacrifice are the reason I stand before you today, and the reason we as a nation gather every November 11th. In his 1985 Veterans Day speech at Arlington National Cemetery, President Ronald Reagan noted the debt Americans have to remembering what our Americans or what our veterans have done. And he says, memories are transmitted through words. To many Americans, the military holds a special place in our nation's history and in maintaining our current status in world affairs. However, Veterans Day is often the only time Americans pause to honor those who came before, those who sought and still seek to defend the country in which we live today. As President John F. Kennedy said in his 1961 Veterans Day speech at Arlington, we celebrate this Veterans Day for a very few minutes, a few seconds of silence, and then this country's life goes on. This evening, I'd like to focus on service. Perhaps this seems obvious, as veterans are created through their service. However, it is through the service of others, that of our fellow Americans, that we are given a chance to maintain certain unalienable rights to participate in the democratic process, to further American interests at home and abroad. Service is not, nor should it be, defined by participation in either a peacetime military or one at war, but by participation at all. After all, few Americans choose this route. For those that do, the reasons behind service are numerous. Pride, a family tradition, an opportunity for higher education, escaping a difficult life at home. Even still, service often means time away from home, wherever that may be, and time away from loved ones. This is a burden endured during both peace and war. November 11th also marks Armistice Day, signifying the end of the First World War in 1918. 69,051 Kansans served during that conflict, including hundreds of KU students, faculty, and alumni. Second Lieutenant Albert Ellis Birch, a KU student, served with A Company, 342nd Machine Gun Battalion, 89th Division. 
Prior to U.S. involvement in the war, he served with the Kansas National Guard and served two enlistment periods. Upon U.S. entrance in April 1917, he received a commission as second lieutenant and was assigned to the 89th Division. He would participate in major operations in France, like the San Mihiel Drive and the Meuse Argonne Offensive. On November 1st, 1918, he was seriously wounded in the neck by shrapnel while directing the fire of a weapons squad. He refused medical attention and stayed with his platoon on the line until November 11th. Early in the morning of the 11th, just hours before the armistice would take effect, Second Lieutenant Birch was killed by a German artillery barrage while conducting reconnaissance with his company commander along the Meuse River. Second Lieutenant Birch said in a letter home just before he died, I'm going to be the best home-loving man when I get home. It'll be America first, last, and all the time with me then. He signed his letter, a soldier of democracy. For his actions while wounded and staying with his platoon, Second Lieutenant Birch was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross posthumously. Just after the end of his service in World War II, veteran Raymond Weeks led a delegation to meet then General Dwight Eisenhower to call for Armistice Day to include honoring veterans from all of America's wars. Weeks would lead celebrations for veterans on November 11th in his Alabama community. Al King of Emporia, Kansas had much the same idea in 1953. Though he was not a veteran himself, King actively campaigned for an all Veterans Day to be observed with the closing of businesses in Emporia. He received support from the American Legion and veterans of foreign wars in observing this new Veterans Day in the community. Kansas Representative Ed Rees then worked to push a bill through Congress that would make this idea a reality. In May 1954, President Dwight Eisenhower signed into law the Act of 1938 that renamed the federal holiday of Armistice Day to Veterans Day. In October 1954, President Eisenhower issued a proclamation declaring the first Veterans Day to be known of November 11th, 1954. On that day, he says, let us solemnly remember the sacrifices of all those who fought so valiantly on the seas, in the air, and on foreign shores. To preserve our heritage of freedom, and let us reconsecrate ourselves to the task of promoting an enduring peace so that their efforts shall not have been in vain. Service to country, as exemplified by Second Lieutenant Birch, and service to veterans, shown by Raymond Weeks and Al King, equal one thing, service to others. It is this principle and those that adhere to it that we honor on Veterans Day. It is this principle, woven into the uniform worn by countless men and women, that allows this country to continue moving forward. It is this principle through which we remember the sacrifice and honor the legacy bestowed upon us by those who came before and by which we are bound to transmit through words so that we might honor our veterans in the best way that we can. It is our debt as Americans and after those few seconds of silence are over and the country's life moves on, that we remember them, honor them, and express our deepest gratitude to those veterans we still have with us. Thank you. Hello and happy Veterans Day from Air Force ROTC Detachment 280. I am Lieutenant Colonel Nikki Phelan, the commander. This is my third year here at command. I spent the last 18 years flying special operations aircraft and this is by far my most rewarding assignment. I thank each and every one of you for your service. It is an honor to be here and it is honor for me to introduce from the Flying Jayhawk Wing, our Cadet Wing Commander, Cadet Colonel Catherine Brainstetter. Thank you, Colonel Phelan. Congratulations and happy Veterans Day to each and every one of you. Valor, sacrifice, and the price of freedom. Alone these words are strong, but when strung together, the impact that they have is strengthened, magnifying their meaning. Each generation of heroes dating back to the formation of our country has embodied these words in their meaning. Revolutionaries standing up to England with the desire to form a country based on the principles of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. World War II, Korean, and Vietnam, and Civil War vets all risked their lives for, the, for their fellow man and for the future generations, both at home and abroad. We are a product of the sacrifices made from those who have come before us. Just like those three words, singular acts of service are strong, but when compounded, they change the world. I wanna thank each and every one of you for your service. 
I am where I am today because just like the generations before, you answered a call. The sacrifices you were asked to make were not light and far from easy. While it may look different from person to person, at the end of the day, you each made a sacrifice. Similarly, courage varied from person to person, but each of you shares the common thought that at the end of the day, you had the courage to say yes and make a sacrifice and therefore represented something larger than yourself. You, the veterans, the brave men and women who came before me are why I serve today. I've been blessed with the opportunity to react, interact with veterans from all war eras, both in my family and in my community. These men have had a great impact on my life. They've mentored me, they've helped me grow, and ultimately they're the ones who inspired me. I owe a lot to Grandpa Joe, who was a World War II vet, and he was one of the nicest men I have ever met. And just from that amazing generation and listening to his stories from the war and just life growing up and what it was like to basically go from a boy to a man in a short amount of time um, meant a lot to me. And so, you know, each of you brings something new to the table. Each of you has a story to tell and to inspire future generations. Um, your sacrifices have not gotten noticed and you really have changed the world. So you inspire future generations, you inspire me. Um, because you said yes and because you made that sacrifice, you have started a butterfly effect affecting future generations. Um, so thank you for your service and happy Veterans Day. Good evening, I am Captain Trenton Leonard, the Naval ROTC Commanding Officer here at the University of Kansas. On behalf of my 82 active duty staff, officer candidates, MESIP participants, and midshipmen, I would like to wish everyone a happy Veterans Day. And I would especially like to thank the Kansas, University of Kansas veterans for all they did in support of our country. I am blessed to be part of such a great organization full of young men and women who are prepared to give their life to the service of their country. They'll be commissioning soon and we'll be sending more sailors and Marines to the fleet. I'm honored today to introduce our battalion commanding officer, Midshipman First Class Jacob Allen is an outstanding representation of the midshipmen we have within the battalion. Midshipman Allen, the floor is yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jacob Allen, the battalion commanding officer with the University of Kansas Naval Reserve Officer Training Corps. I'm a first class midshipman studying strategic communications from Kansas City, Missouri. My desire to join the Navy began early in high school after realizing that I wanted to do something bigger than myself. As time progressed, my desire grew, and I knew that I wanted to serve in any capacity, whether that be in the air, on a ship, or under the sea in a submarine. When I joined the KU and ROTC program, I was not on scholarship, but this didn't stop my desire. The end goal for me was, was to serve, and I was not overly concerned about obtaining the funds from the scholarship. Rather, I wanted to know that one day I would raise my right hand, swearing myself to protect and serve the Constitution, as well as the men and women of this nation. Throughout my time in the unit, I have met and learned from men and women that I would not have met or crossed paths with if I had not joined. I have met students that had the same drive and determination that I have. I've met other students that wanted to do something bigger than themselves. I met other students that wanted to serve this country. I embrace my time in the Jayhawk NRTC Battalion, and I am thankful for every day that I am a member of this university and this program. Recently, I was selected to serve as a submarine warfare officer and could not be more excited about this opportunity in front of me upon graduation. This community will present many challenges that I plan to overcome and will give me the opportunity to deploy forward as part of the Navy's silent service. I would like to take a moment to reflect on those that have come before myself. Veterans from around the globe have helped to elevate our armed forces to, high, to a highly recognized team throughout the world. We would not be as great as we are without you and the sacrifices you've made. Unfortunately, there are those who have made the ultimate sacrifice, but we will forever be grateful. I would like to give my regards to the Nick, Nick Heron family. While I might, may not have had the opportunity to learn directly from your son, the lessons and memories that he gave this unit are not lost. We will now and forever continue to keep him in our hearts and our memories. This coming weekend, as part of our Veterans Day celebration, members of the Army, Naval, and Air Force battalions will be standing watches at, mul at multiple war memorials along Memorial Drive from 07 November at 1100 
to 08 November at 1100. Standing these watches gives our cadets and midshipmen the opportunity to learn how to stand a watch and represent the units of the community in the highest of regards. It also gives young midshipmen the opportunity to reflect on the lessons that the upperclassmen have taught them. I hope that if you have the opportunity, you will take a stroll down Memorial Drive this weekend and take time to remember our KU veterans. We are extremely blessed to have this opportunity to stand vigils in honor of the men and women that have come before us. On behalf of the K KU Jayhawk Battalion, I would like to thank the men and women that have served our great nation in any, in any capacity, as well as your families. We are hope you are all safe and well during these strange times. Again, thank you and happy Veterans Day. another 30 seconds to remember our friends, family members, and our loved ones. Thank you very much. Now we're going to switch to uh, your participation. We're going to go with our Armed Forces song. We know how much you enjoy singing your songs because Moonlight Serenade in the middle of our gala will play these songs. And all of you, with all of your pride, will either stand up, sit down if you can't stand up, and you are really participating in your song. So this is your time to participate and have fun and show your pride. Thank you. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were singing and having a good time. And uh, we're going to continue, but slow it down just a little bit. We knew how dedicated you were to your songs, and we wanted to give you that opportunity to sing and show your pride. Now we're going to present our slideshow for you. We call it Memories Over the Years. These photos were taken from 2008 when we started up to 2019. So you will see a lot of your friends, you'll see yourselves, you'll look at yourselves and think, boy, did I look good? You know, and you'll see yourselves on the floor dancing and you'll say, oh yeah, I still had it. And the rest of you were sitting there just enjoying it. And we hope that you will enjoy your, this slideshow as well. There's over 250 photographs. It's about 27 minutes. So as a result of that, I'll say at this time, you might wish to take a moment, if you don't have it already, to go get your favorite beverage so that you can enjoy. And I'm going to suggest that I hope you will tap your foot as you're listening to the music and watching the photos sway a little bit. You might want to reminisce a little bit and even dance if you choose to do so. This is your slideshow and we hope that you will enjoy.
This can't be love because I feel so well. No sobs, no sorrows, no sighs. This can't be love. I get no dizzy spells. My head is not in the sky. My heart does not stand still. Just hear it beat. It's
All right. That was your salute at the end. And also, I hope you enjoyed our slideshow and that you saw a lot of people you knew and that you saw yourself and that you'll tell your friends also that you saw this video tonight. I know it was virtual and it's very difficult for people sometimes, but do spread the word so that they'll have an opportunity because it will be on our video and our YouTube channel. So you'll be able to see it for many, many, many years. It'll be there. So do pass the word and everything else. I do want to thank some individuals tonight. I was thanked. Uh, my boss, Bill Lacey, thanked me, and so did Senator the Dole. But I want to thank Michelle Vignola Rogers, uh, who's on our staff here, and she did an awful lot of work uh, going through photos and doing everything, as well as Marla Schluter. Uh, Schluter. Uh, they did a fabulous job. Uh, I want to thank Kaylin, because Kaylin was always involved in whatever we do, Mark Crabtree, and Zach uh, Walker. So thank you so very much. Um, you know, before I close, I also have two other uh, notices or announcements that I would like to share with you. Uh, coming up on the 12th of uh, November, uh, if you live in Lawrence, you might have seen it uh, in the Lawrence Journal World. But again, the Elizabeth Dole Women in Leadership Lecture, General Diana Holland, will uh, be on our YouTube channel on Thursday at 7 p.m. She graduated from the United States Military Academy and was commissioned a second lieutenant in the Corps of Engineers in 1990. She served in Operation Freedom Sent Sentinel uh, Joint Task Force uh, Diamond in Afghanistan. She also served in Operation Iraqi Freedom and as commander of the South Atlantic Division, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, she oversaw support for disaster-stricken states following uh, hurricanes Irma, Maria, and Michael. So I hope you will tune in, and that will be another opportunity, especially for Army uh, and uh, all veterans, uh, to uh, hear from General Diana Holland. Also, and you don't want to miss this, there's a giveaway and it's going to happen here in the parking lot at the Dole Institute of Politics, uh, November the 14th, from 9 to 11 a.m. Uh, it's the Elizabeth Dole Foundation Operation Gratitude and Wounded Warrior Project are joining forces with the City of Lawrence and the Dole Institute to express appreciation to our local military and veteran families. So join us at the Dole Institute on uh, November the 14th, that's next Saturday from nine to one in the parking lot. Uh, and uh, from a safe distance, so we'll be you know, keeping our distance for a special drive-through event where you will be showered with special gifts, resources, and other tokens of appreciation from local organizations. Anytime you're being honored, show up and they're happy to do it. So it will be this Saturday. Um, so I want to make sure that you uh, knew about that as well. Well, I'm going to close and I hope that you have enjoyed um, our tribute to veterans. I would like to say thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, I know it's a little different than what we've done before, and COVID-19 has created a world very different from what we know, and my hope and prayer is that this time next year, we will be right here at the Dole Institute in Hanson Hall. Uh, until then, on behalf of Bill Lacey, myself, and the rest of the staff at the Dole Institute. We would like to wish you a happy Veterans Day and thank you for your many sacrifices, your dedication and service to our country. It was our pleasure 
to come into your homes and bring you this tribute. Again, happy Valentine's happy Veterans Day. And thank you for your many sacrifices, dedication, and service to our country. Be well, stay safe, and good night.